Hi, Johnny. It's Friday, the 2nd of September, 2016. And I'm summarising my week in the court last Monday. Uh, the judge ruled in our favour against police. Well, in my case, in my favour, against police versus John Wanoa in the Cook Street, 77 Cook Street case. They lost to me and these documents, citations and videos and Facebook to add to my evidence. The result was the police had insufficient evidence and I put that down to simply that Nat Natalie Flowerdew Brown subpoenaed to the court from me and my barrister Shannon Withers, Vulcan Chambers lawyers, failed to turn up in the court hearing. That's a serious case of police not being there and spirited her away to the Solomon Islands so that they could engineer some form of escape for her not to appear in front of her documents she fashioned and created and invented to arrest me I'm not worrying about anybody else for those court martials, Maori federal court martials US, UN Federal Court Marshals, they were nowhere near me. I only had my barrister. They did not get a barrister, only me. When we came out of the prison, I engaged a barrister and they didn't because they didn't believe in anything corporate. They had a different approach, used the McKinsey stream, and that didn't work. Judge threw it out, threw everything they put in their documents in front of them because it was not how I did it, corporate law, corporate versus corporate. I did mine with corporate companies, my own New Zealand registered company, Na Atua Ewa Alte Limited, and my British UK jurisdiction company, Moai Powerhouse Group Limited Limited. Now, that's how I did my case, from corporate versus corporate. And all these documents that Natalie Flower Dude Brown did are corporate trusts involving my birth certificate. The offence is my birth certificate and these documents, not anything else. It was these documents in the end that I said to my barrister in the instructions, I'm going to put all his emails to me and from me to him, instructing him each way, each time, on the dates, right from the outset of this court hearing, when I was arrested on the 3rd of October last year, 2015, took this long to get this far for me to not have my court case of my own. Uh, separated from everybody else. Their court cases were different to mine. <clears throat> and however they got off their court case, still, is, I haven't got no correspondence at all from the court. I got no documents to appear in the court on my hearing three times. Three separate weeks leading up to the 22nd, there was the 15th of August, and that was delayed to the 22nd, and then that was delayed to the 29th, the following Monday. It's all there, I'm going to graphically put everything that my barrister, who got paid from my birth certificate, stolen money, stolen received money, with these documents. The court used these fraud, corrupted, documents that Natalie Flowerdew Brown wrote up 
without the seals of the court, without the seals of the Queen, without the seals of the Supreme Court, or Westminster Parliament, or the Government of New Zealand. No seal. No authority to enforce these documents on me, to arrest me in my house here. That's the offence. This is the offence. And to make matters worse, she forged the statements of her witnesses on Cook Street. Now they're liable. She's liable. Everyone's 43 people that I already told my barrister that I am liable in them. I told them what I wanted to do. I wanted to bring whoever countersign my signature on the bail bond I told them is blackmail, robbery and theft of my identification birth certificate. I told them all of these things to bring that person who created the name or was the name Hawani John Wano in capitals and the Hawani Wano in lower case lettering. I signed that piece of document and somebody else countersigned to go into my trust account to pull money out of, to pay themselves with. That is fraud inside these documents that were constructed with the intent of defrauding me and the public of New Zealand, financial investment interests of their own. The police are corrupted the legal system and jurisdiction of law justice in New Zealand with these documents. The registrar of the court as the sheriff used these documents after the judge had dismissed the case as insufficient evidence to convict me of what was written in here as an offence on something I didn't do on Cook Street. I just wasn't inside there committing the offences. And they left one person out, two persons out. You see, it's flawed. The whole of these documents are flawed and she's going to appear in court under subpoena again against the fraud documents. And me, she put me into a contract here this is a contract between her and me, nobody else. Just her and me, her signature, in here. And she used these documents to arrest me. I said, you can't do that to me, because the Pope said you can't use these capitals and all the UCC laws on me. And so she did go ahead with it. That's the offence that I have against her personally injuring me. And I'm going to make her appear in court under a subpoena like how a subpoena should be. When you get subpoenas in court, it means you appear in court. Whether you're a policeman or anybody else, you still have two legs, a brain, and a crooked brain. To write this up and thinking you can make your own laws up against me. I have my law here in this flag and this hat the New World Order of Pope Francis here and King William IV and the Moai Crown Corporation Trust. I'm a corporate king's trust system of jurisdiction, of admiralty, the real admiralty, not vice admiral, the real admiralty, king's law, corporate trust. Now I'm testing your corporate trust. Queen's Bench Court Trust that has just committed the biggest police fraud in the world right here in my house. Okay, so this is what this video is all about. I'm going into the High Court in New Zealand first before I go into the British courts. will rule straight away because they know these laws have been broken and it's there liability because they left New Zealand government running rife.
with no checks and balances. I'm here to keep track on that contract here and the contract of the court with that bail bond. That's another contract. Right? The police, uh, uh, the prison put me in another contract with my signature to a trust to blackmail me to let me free from prison that I shouldn't be there because these documents are thrown out of court. I should not have been in the court to make money out of me. That's what I'm saying. After the fact, it has happened that the court ruled after the fact of the other judges before this judge that was there, uh, judge, um, just find the name of the judge, um, I've got it there somewhere, um, I'll try and find it, I've got it written down on Facebook, I put it all on Facebook, as being judge in which, uh, no I haven't got it there, I haven't got the name, I have got it somewhere, judge, oh, I should have had it somewhere, anyway, judge of the day, dismiss the case, dismiss the case, I've got the, the email, I better say the name of the judge, here, here it is in the email. My service to you is complete. The charges against you have been dismissed by His Honour, Judge Sharp. There you go, Judge Sharp. <coughs> Eight days ago, 25th of August, um, when he sent me the email, um, officially saying that I, the case against me was dismissed. It means that whatever the judge and the court did is another contract to extract money after this policewoman created her own laws to arrest me, which made the rest of everything not authentic. The judge ruled on not authentic documents, fraudulent documents with fraud statements. I already said to my barrister, Shannon Withers, you know. I've got all the emails to put online. I'm making a, this is a trial by media, by social media, a trial by social media that everybody is looking at what you didn't do for me. You were getting paid by my birth certificate and my inheritance money. Because you had no regard for me and my own court hearing. I was waiting for you to go to court with me by myself and the judge to make a ruling for me. That's what courts are for, for me, not for anybody else's interest. And now I'm by myself to go and make another court hearing to bring you into court, Shannon Willis, because you're a third party now. You receive stolen money. You receive stolen money and knew it. You knew these UCC laws were corrupted and yet you still endorsed them. When you say to me these things are untrue about Vatican, to be clear, your defense, this is what you're saying. To be clear, your defense of Pope Francis Vatican City motu proprio and demanding the false John Wanoa be held to account for your misconduct was misconceived. You're going to go up for that. You're going to go up for that. You're going to have to prove to me in court that that name, with all the capital bullshit, and all that handwriting that Natalie Flower Dew Brown got, and who signed it, countersigned, there's two people in a contract. Shannon Willis, don't fool around with me with contracts because I've studied it long enough, and you're not that clever after all. I think you're just as fraudulent to say statements that are not true. It's not true what you're saying here about that name, Mr. Wanor. 
there's no such name as Mr. Wano. See, that's where your law is corrupted as your brain. Shannon with us. Your brain is corrupted and rotten to the core. You're a rotten man and your law firm and all the rest, rest of the bar association in this country is completely corrupted. It is completely corrupted with all this shit there. Right? Everything in here, and you touched it. Everyone who touched these documents are party to the fraud. That's what I'm going to the court for. To take you all into court and string you up and take everything off you. I have the right, the legal right as a native of this land, with the right surname, to sue you all for doing that to me. Shannon Withers. I could boot you out of this country or hang you with the King William's laws because we still have them in this flag up at Waitangi. It's still our law. You don't have preamble or you don't have the law that got you here to prove to me how you got here, you idiot. I can say anything about you because you humiliated me with the rest of those police and those people on Cook Street, and the news, and the, all the newspapers, and all those whale oil blubber men, all those people, you're going to get sued off your ass for saying bad things about me that are not true. So here you said this, to be clear, your defense of Pope Francis, Vatican City, motu proprio, and demanding the false John Wanoa be held to account for your misconduct and misconceived. You're calling me misconduct when this policewoman is not there to stand in front of me with no guts. You police have no guts. You're just smart, cheeky bastards. And you too. Shannon Withers, you're all in the same club. Looking after your own financial interests and screwing words. You're going to get stuck up with the screwing words around to deceive me and the public of New Zealand. They know what you're doing. They know. They can read. They're not that dumb as you lawyers are. Pack of thieves. Right, here it says, This is a secular society, Mr. Weimar. Even if the Pope had issued such an edict, it would be of no effect in this country. A casual search of the internet shows no such decree. No such decree. He has taken these laws off you, you bastards. He has destroyed these laws, you bastards. In all the states, you don't read between the lines. Shannon Withers, you're not a good lawyer. You're rubbish. That's why I say in front of this video, right in front of everybody in the world, watching. I know what I'm talking about. I'll know more than you do, Shannon Withers, about these native lands. They're not your lands. You're only occupying these lands. If I say you go, you go. If I win this court case, next one, about that land on Cook Street, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it with this flag in the jurisdiction of UK with my company over there. That's the creditor. You're the debtors, Shannon. I've warned you people. I've warned you people that this is the house of cards, that you're all the fraudsters in it with Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and all those ISIS people, they're going in the rubbish bin. The people had enough of you listening to me. They're not going to listen to you, pack of thieves, Shannon, after this lot. You're going to have to prove to me in the court, I'm, I'm taking you to court, you're going to have to prove what you're saying here to me, someone who should know these lands better than you do. You're an imported surname from somewhere else, outside of here. And we have the right to kick you out. We have the legal right to kick you out. The same as what Donald Trump is saying. Break our law, we'll break your neck and kick you out. That's about what it is. That I'm, I'm saying the strongest words of my chiefs, King Itaro, and his Napoli chiefs. I'm here to speak for this flag on their behalf, and I don't mind talking like this because I'm here to talk for them, the fashion of warriors. 
That's how we natives talk. Okay, if you mess around with us, now we have the British Navy, military, our partners with the track. It wouldn't be standing here flying with that red cross on it if they didn't give it and those eight point star here. They wouldn't have got given this if they didn't think we we're trustworthy enough to hold this flag for 182 years this year on the 28th of October 2016. This flag will be flying off the top, you'll be gone. Shannon, you'll be assed out with John Key. He won't be around, even Sean Rice and Jerry Montepurai, you'll be strung in, in prison. We'll have enough people to go and string you up for doing this to me, for, for this shit. You know, your court judge, this judge here, threw these out. Threw these out. Insufficient evidence. You know what? I've got more on Facebook and YouTube than you lot of bastards put together. That's why, that's what Judge Collins says, when you, you fucking idiot, barrister, shit, head, Shannon Withers, said to Judge Collins, or oh, John Wano wants to ask you a question. Judge Collins just said to you, there's no need for that because it's all on YouTube. That's why, you fucking useless bitch, Shannon Withers, that's why I make these videos. Because I can swear as much as I want. Because you'll lose your case. And anybody who doesn't have as much information as I've got. I can say anything I like about what I put online because I'm sticking by my word. It's my word against yours. It's my word against anybody's word. That's Moai God's law. If you can't hack it, or can't rebut it, or can't do anything, it's because you can't. You can't, because this flag is right behind me. You prop me up with the chiefs here at Ngāpui, and the chiefs down the East Cape at Port Awanui on Te Horo Marae, and Te Kapa Marae. They support me about you screwing our lands, and screwing our names. You, Shannon Withers, have degraded my surname, the most spiritual of native on East Island, with that name, Wānoa, you belittled and disregarded who the hell the fuck I am. Right? You didn't care fuck about me, I don't care fuck about you. As far as I can boot your fucking ass out of here. Go back and learn something or two about forged documents, about how to forge names and use language that deceives and cheats. That's what that did. Okay? And you saying this, you saying you're trying to frighten me. I observed that in overall circumstances of your case you were extremely lucky. You're not fucking lucky with all this shoved down your fucking throat, Shannon Withers. I'm going to shove this lot of papers down your throat for using them against me while they have been thrown out of court as insufficient evidence from another of your white Pakia faced bitches, police, corrupting this country. That's all I can say about you people. Pakias came here to screw everyone. Right? Finish. No more. No more. We had enough of this bullshit papers. We had enough of this law. We got our own law, King William's law. And put all those hanging, hangy bastards acts back in for pirates. When you do pirate things like this, to me, you're doing it to everybody else in the world. They've got the same police documents. That's why I want to clean you lot out. I want to get rid of you, and so does everybody else in the world watching these videos. They want to get rid of you as well, and your queen, and your everything. Rothschild Banks, the whole lot of you fraud people. <clears throat> you see, you trying to frighten me. As for your declaration that you will go back to 77 Cook Street, I cannot emphasize strongly enough that you should not do that. Who's, who are you to say I should not? 
who, whose law are you saying that I should not when I say I will? I will with, when I win this case against you lot of thugs. Shannon, who's for you to tell me what to do? I've been instructing you what to do. You didn't do it. You didn't do any of it I asked you to do and you didn't give me my court hearing by myself in court. You just left me for dead and you changed my court date Right on the day I was waiting eight years for my court case and you said, oh, next week is your court case. You were going to rule without me in the court and say to me, oh, John, you need, don't need to come next week. It's all over. You see, I never got a hearing. I never got my day in court. Now I'm going to make my day in court. You're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for everything and I'm going to strip you of everything, Shannon. I'm going to strip you of everything. I'm going to bankrupt you fucking lot. Alright, I can say that. I can say that because my chiefs are pissed off with you lot. The chiefs in this country, the whole lot of them, and the people, are pissed off with you, John T, and your fucking corrupted lot of thugs and pirates. That's all I can say about that. Now, I'm going to... Um, uh, conduct my own court hearing in the High Court. I'm just going through, I've got to go through all this trouble. You're holding my business up, Shannon. You just walked off and said it's all over between me and you. Nothing. Nothing. You got your money. I'm going to get that fucking money back off you, you thief. I'm going to get that money back off you when I get who's got it, who signed it, who signed that trust, and I'll whip the whole bloody lot. I've got a trillion riding on your head, Shannon, and every person who got on my road. If you haven't got a law higher than what I've got, you're going to get a trillion pounds on all of your heads. 15,000, please. I've got a trillion on each of your heads. Don't think I'm mad. I've already said this enough times. I can say what I say. I'll put the bill into the High Court in London, and they'll get it out of you. They'll get it out of you. They'll get it out of you. They're, they're, they're liable because they left you bastards to run rife with no no one to check on you. That's right. The British government is liable for letting you bastards run free and screwing everybody. Right? Right? That's what I'm saying in this video. I mean what I say. And what I wanted to do was to I'm, I'm citing I'm citing the real property by Jeff Moore, Semester, Torrens and Old System Titles. I'll put all these in red bold of the Torrens system. I'll just read some of it out to you, not all of it. Um, the Old System is the English bought their system, Old System Title to Australia, tracing ownership back through, I'm talking about the land title, the 77 Cook Street fraud title. Now, all I have to do is now I've got the proof that there's fraud in there with this case being thrown out is because they had nothing against what I had to say about the title, okay? The police covered up the fraud. That's why I've been going since 2008. I've been on this title and doesn't matter how many people change hands, the first title was corrupted and I warned them, Baileys, you're going to get bankrupted. I'm taking everything off you. Now that this has proven that the police are corrupted, the court is corrupted, the lawyers are corrupted, and the barristers are corrupted. All corrupted with this shit lot of paper. Not worth the paper it's written on. All these corrupted words. I'm saying this out aloud that the law has been fashioned from its original King William IV laws Acts of 1830, 1837 of commerce and banking instruments and mortgage lands have been corrupted by this lot of white-faced bastards, pale-faced crooks, okay? All right, and I've got the, um, the uh, notice of rejection of my caveat. I had the legal right to register this caveat, D 
dealing number 8027703, North Auckland Land Registry District. Notice of rejection. John Hawaii Kahaki Wanoa, 4 Bar 13 Amadale Road, Remiera, Auckland, New Zealand. It wasn't real estate at that time. And this was um, dated on the 17th of December 2008. There, there you go. Okay, there you go. This is my proof why I'm going to get that land back. Because under the Torrens law system, which is this country and Australia is running on, if it's proven that there has been a fraud in the title, then the land will go back to the original owners. The Land Information New Zealand Lins Register failed to register these unregistered interests. It meant that I'm allowed to, as an owner, the Manukau Land Title under the Manukau Land Company, Glasgow, they put the title together in Auckland. We should have had our names on these documents before the land was transferred. They failed to do that under section 145A and 145 of the 1952 Land Transfer Act, New Zealand. They failed to register our unregistered interests. All other interests are registered. The unregistered names should have been on the title as the original owners. They cannot prove who they bought it off. You see? Because the titles were altered by Grant, the Australian land surveyor, who came here and took over lands, altered it and put a dead man's name there, Southland, and signed it. Pick, copy and pasted a signature of a dead man. That's what it is. You'll all lose, you're going to lose it, and the whole country as a consequence of this failure to register our interest as the original owners. Okay, I'm holding the original title here and the original title to Waitangi land blocks and to tea land blocks. I'm holding the original titles from two of the older Confederation of Chiefs, Mohi Manuka for the Auckland title and Hare Ututonga for the Waitangi land blocks gave me those titles. Those two chiefs, while they were still alive under this flag of jurisdiction and authority, gave me the titles to look after because they didn't even trust their own families. They gave it to me because they trust me. And that's the reason why I'm here telling you this story as much as I want to swear about it. I'm swearing all my truth and all my swearing words to God Almighty. So help me God, everything I say you cannot refute. Okay, so these constitutes the offence on that land block of not registering our names on their title. Even though we didn't have any money in it, we are the owners, the native owners of that land in the native title before it got sold. Okay? If you've got enough information like that, you can do that. But if you don't put it on the document, you're committing offence against your own legal systems. Okay? So under the Torrens Law System, if there is a fraud, in any of the transactions or happenings on the land block, then that constitutes a crime. In this case, now that these are proven to be fraudulent, it's police that have defrauded and corrupted these documents and all their documents has corrupted. It's the police who are the culprits, the criminals here. The actual CIB,
criminal investigation bureau are the criminals themselves. And they're calling us criminals. They're calling us the pirates and thugs. They're the thugs and the pirates. I've caught them out. I have caught you out, Shannon Withers. And you can't get out of it. Not when you're in front of King William and Maui statue. Maui law is the truth. I'm saying here, in these torrents, law system, I'm just going to quote some of the citations that are going in front of the court with you having to answer me to the judge. Where did you get your authority to say what you're saying about things I can't and can do? Right? You have a cheek, a fucking cheek, to tell me what I can't do. Now I've got the law of Britain, UK jurisdiction behind me. You have no right to say things that are not true to me. You don't know the law. You only know corruption. The English bought their system, old system title to Australia, tracing ownership back through previous owners until it reached the original Crown Grant. That's where these titles in Auckland came from. Crown Grant and Whiting. Crown Grant. See? Britain. The emphasis was placed on the idea that my title was no better than the person from which I purchased the item land from. I.e., if you purchase from a thief, your title is no better than the thief's. That is, no title. So we got thieves here, stealing money out of me, <coughs> with crop documents. The Torrens title, the system developed in South Australia in C19 by Sir Torrens title, adapted in New South Wales by the Real Property Act 1900, which overrode previous legislation of 1862. The system has been embraced across Australia, New Zealand, Israel, Malaysia, in Russia. 99% of land in Australia is governed by the TT system, Torrens title system. And then I go, I've marked everything in red. Um, highlight to show up in my court case. The fundamental difference between two systems is the principle of registration versus real ownership. The process involved two identical contracts. I sign, one signed by the vendor, the other signed by the purchaser being exchanged. At that point, both parties are considered contract contractually bound. We're bound, now, Natalie Flower, dear Brown, we're bound in the contract with these papers that you arrested me with. We're bound in the contract. I haven't finished with you because I'm taking it to court. This contract, I'm taking it to court to show the court how you made your contract with me and why it failed. Section 414243 of the Real Property Act. The title is granted the way of by way of registration. Section 44, by title by registration has the quality of indivisibility, indivisibility title granted only on the registration. What is the judgment? When dealing with two equal innocent parties, the court will find for the party that is registered over the unregistered party. Right. Got that? If I'm not registered, the registered party, the landowners on Cook Street, you listen up here. You little thugs, listen to me, what I'm saying here. Don't flitch an eyelid because you put the police in. You put the police in front of me. You put the lawyers in front of me. You put everything in front of me, stacked up to try and keep me away. You can't keep me away. Not from my land. You can't keep me away from my, I'm coming to take my land off you. My, when I say my land, I mean my chiefs. The native chiefs want their land back. Here, in Waitangi, and the rest of the country, when they wake up to the fact that you're caught. You're all caught in the fraud with your fingers in the money. With my money. You have stolen and received my money with my signature on a two-way contract. Me and that other fucking bastard I want in court. Okay, Shannon, with us. You're coming with him into court. That Mr. John Hawani Wanoa in capital. That person. I want that 
fucking bastard in court with you and Natalie Flowerdew Brown and those two landowners because you've conspired to defraud me and screw me of money in that account. I'm putting a trillion pounds on that account. Alright, that's the value I'm putting on that inheritance and everybody else's inheritance in the world that's been screwed the same way. Okay, I'll do mine then I'll do the whole lot of them. Okay, just my statement to you. I'm converting this fraud document into cash. Back for all the fucking trouble you put me through. And I'm with it, waiting around for eight months for a court case that never happened. I wasn't in court because it wasn't your intention to have me in court and to rule because it was too much for you. It was stacked up against you and you were scratching your fucking brain, useless brains, all of you useless thugs, for over eight months since the 3rd of October last year. October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. That's ten months. August, September, October, November, December. Add another five to that. Fifteen months and another eight this year. Right? Fifteen, eight, thirteen. Twenty-three months. Twenty-three fucking months I waited for you lot of shitties to take me to court. And you didn't. You didn't take me to court because... I put too much online, and my court hearing is by trial by media, social media, where people can see you can't get away with it. You can't get away with it, Shannon, not even you manipulating. You manipulated the law. You manipulated these documents and manipulated words against me and my interest for you being paid to do a job for me, you failed to perform. I'm saying all these things about you while you're counting a bitch for not representing me or what barristers and lawyers, don't ever go to a barrister or lawyer, you're wasting your fucking money. Come to me, people, come to me, I'll do your court case, split second, it's all over. After this one, it's easy to interpret the law. Chuck most of it out and start, go back to King William's laws, 1830 to 1837, because it's got rigid laws. You break the law, you off your head. That's the only way to deal with you thugs. This flag was made for thugs and pirates. And now, boy, I'm afraid you should have been using it to cut loose these thugs. And otherwise, you would have had all your land and doing commerce yourself. Uh, registration grants title to land. When dealing with two equally innocent parties, the court will find in favour of the registered party over the unregistered party. Then it goes down here. I marked it further down. Exceptions to indefeasibility. Indefeasibility means no one can challenge a registered interest in land. That means a certificate with your name transferred to you from someone else who sold it to you and you paid a deposit and you got your name registered in a registration system under the Torrens Australian system. That's title. Those are titles, not the land. Those are just titles and mortgages. They're only instruments, bits of paper. And you'll find I'm going to strip those papers to bits because I'm in real estate, don't forget. And I'm using my authority here to investigate. I'm an investigator, by the way, private investigator, of our own native titles and native courts. Okay, we're allowed to be native assessors and native sheriffs on our own land. You haven't bought the whole lot out yet. You're still trying to settle with your own Maoris. That belongs to John Key. Maori and Iwi belongs to the Corporation Crown. Okay, it's nothing to do with Hapu and the King. Nothing, absolutely nothing. That's a different corporate system, debtors. This is the King's corporate trust system, creditor. Okay, no debts. We don't believe in debts over there and crooked documents. Okay, and lies and fakes and fraud and corruption. Okay, that's that law. When dealing with scenarios two and three, 
The registrar, registrar's person generally shall have priority unless there is an exception to indefeasibility. And it says, the exceptions, listen up you fucking thugs on Cook Street. Exceptions A, fraud. Okay, listen. SS section 4243 both recognize fraud as an exception to indefeasibility. That means you don't have clear title if there's fraud in it. Fraud can be committed by the person who is registered or by someone who acted for the benefit of the person who is registered. The police acted for you, your land conveyancing lawyers acted for you, those public people on that land block in the office acted for you, thugs, landowners, James Pierce Brown and Simon Brent Roundtree. Everyone acted for you in this part of the Act of Torrens Land Titles. I know a thing or two about titles. That's my profession. Okay? I've got a ticket for that. I've got a ticket for being in land transactions and mortgage and fraud land titles. Okay? I just wanted to show you who I am in that department. I've got something here to show you. Who the fucking hell I am in real estate. Alright? It's somewhere in here. Got my real estate ticket. If I can find it. It appears I haven't found it. Anyway, I can't find it. It's somewhere around. Uh, would have been good to show you. No. Man, I'd never want to go near another fucking lawyer in all my fucking life. Never. Because they're just a bunch of liars and cheats and thieves. And from a clubhouse of white-faced bastards. That's what I can say about them. White-faced immigrants. Jeez, I can't even find it anywhere. Oh, I know where it is. It's on my keys. It's over here. I was going to show you. I use that my identification. There. Okay. There, there I am in real estate, right there. Okay, I'm not, I'm not there now, but that just shows you that I am in real estate. I just, I got, I got everything in mortgage broking and my own companies in mortgage broking, mortgage reduction limited company. I was running doing my own mortgages bank loans and all that sort of thing. So I know a thing about land. Don't try and call me Channel with us. You're just a stupid old fucking lawyer and nothing else. You're no use in anything else. Right, now we go down to where, uh, after what I just said, where the dishonest party is registered, fraud will apply. If you're registered on that title, which is this one, this one here, in a 81 b bar 528, that was the title to that land block before you bought it. Si uh, Simon Brent Roundtree and James Pierce Brown. That was the name of the title that I'm going back to. Now here is the private registration. My private registration was rejection all over. Okay, I'm showing you my title interests in that land where I'm going to come and whip your bloody ass off it. I'm going to take it because no one's got evidence. No one has evidence. Like the judge said, no one has evidence in these documents he threw out. And they won't have evidence against what I have on that title. None of you bastards. Alright? 
none of you bastards have any title here because you can't show me who you bought it off. Who the first one bought it off. Okay? So anyway, these are all my documents and seals. You can see the seals there. I have private registration, see? Private registration. Caveat against dealings with land under Land Transfer Act 1952. X824749.1 caveat. Right? That should have put our names on the title. Failed. So this one failed. This lot failed. From Natalie Flower Dew Brown, please. The judge and the registrar cashed it in after it was thrown out by this judge. We had four judges in this lot. The first judge found me innocent of any crimes because I quoted Pope Francis and the fact that he had no queen above his head. He dismissed the case. And then the police brought it up. And away they went with this lot of shit. And it's come to nothing. What they did to me after Grant Fraser dismissed the case was what should have happened when then I, I knew that all this lot is going to fail. One day it'll fail. It failed. Two years later. Fail. Okay? And now this lot is going to fail. The land block title is going to fail the same way as the police. So that makes the police, the government, and the land titles and Australia torrents fail. Because they didn't follow the law of transfer. That's as much as I know about law. Right, we've got Wicks versus Bennett, 1921. If the notice is dishonest enough, if the notice is dishonest enough, it might make the notifier fraudulent and therefore amount to fraud. Okay? E.g. knowing of a forged signature, forged signature, and taking advantage of it. The police took advantage of your signatures of the witnesses, I've got all that evidence, where she altered, tampered with that information of statements and put your names in capitals the same way as she put my name in capitals. Capitals, you bastard Shannon Withers, you saw that, but you did nothing, you ignored it, you bastards ignored it. Shannon Withers, you ignored these writings of false statements that those um, witnesses in Cook Street signed and she signed to statements that were not true. And then you, you thug bastard, picked them up, then carried on with them as if they were real and authentic. You are party to the fraud, Shannon Withers. That's what I'm saying on this video. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't take me to court because that's what I'm waiting for. You to take me to court. So it won't cost me anything then. If one of you thugs took me to court, then it'll save me all the bother. And you'll lose. You'll only go to court to lose. I won't go to the court in England unless this court plays up. So judges in these courts in New Zealand, don't play up with me because the British are watching you make mistakes. You're making mistakes in front of them and making the worst mistake in front of me and my chiefs. Totally amused, bewildered and pissed off. Okay? They're highly pissed off with you, fucking fucks. Constructive notice is not fraud. Right? When they say constructive notice is not fraud, is when they say to you, oh, we bought the title thinking it was real. We didn't know it was crooked. So everybody has accepted it as being real. Until I come along and take you to court. That's when the shit hit the fan. Section 42, bracket 1C. Where the boundaries have been misdescribed by something like a convincing error, 
This section allows the register to redefine the boundaries so that they reflect the boundaries appropriately. So now we're getting into titles. Possession title requires the possession is open, not in secret. Uh -huh. How much secrets are in this lot? I'm going to open the secret of hidden banks. Right? Biggest secret is the birth certificates and the conveyancing instruments. That's why the conveyancing lawyers are staying right away from me. They should have handled this case and not the police. They put these landowners, put the police in front of the conveyancing lawyers because they're going for, you're going for escape. Um, um, you, you, bear, you, you, you conveyancing lawyers, uh, those two conveyancing lawyers that I, uh, I was representing, Jamie Peters, all right, both of you, Mac McDonald, McDonald and the other one, Andrew McDonald and the other one, both of you, I've got your names there. So you're in the gun, you're in the gun, Bowen, J, oh, X of adverse possession include paying rates, Kirby versus Cowdery and animals grazing. Bowen can either. Oh, that's another case. So, so there. That that's the torrent system of fraud. Unregistered interest. Here we go to the unregistered. Interest. I want to get on to this one. This is very important, people. Watching my videos. You're learning how to do a case. It's not that hard to do because when I finish this one and when. I'll do any case after that in a split second. It's all over. I would not have to go to the court anymore. I'll do it online. Because I used to do National Bank, Queen Street, Auckland, mortgage broking, and approved all the loans under Clive Merritt, the bank manager at that time. It's ANZ now bought National Bank. But they will know on the records that I did all the mortgages straight out and issued the loan to refinance homes and home improvements. I got the money for that and refinanced all their, their loans and everything and did um, uh, converted cars to gas, run on gas, al alternative energy at the same time. So I was able to assess somebody's credibility for the bank. That's what I'm doing here. I'm assessing credibility for bank loans in the new pound notes, the King William Fourth Maui pound notes. I'll assess anybody's credibility to have money from thuggery returned to us and dished out to the people where it belongs. Whatever I recover belongs to the people, okay, who join us in, in Maui. Um, before I forget, before I get on to this unregisterable interest, I want to say this before I forget, that I'm mounting this case and appealing to crowdfunding these cases in the courts of every country that the Crown is in. Okay, we're starting with New Zealand and London, uh, England, with this case, the, this case here, uh, to bring those people into the court to try them. Okay, it's going to cost a bit of money uh, to get that, but I am, I am saying if you um, go to our website, mypowerhouse.com, and fill out the application in the front, I will put the deposit there for any um, donations or money um, put towards the court case I'm doing. Uh, and what I will do in return is to put your name in to the free pound note share, so that means <coughs> we're going to put start with 25 pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds, and 1,000 pounds towards the court case. In that case, I will allocate you with whichever amount you choose, with a free matched amount against your money. So that means you'll go straight into the share system of Maui pound notes and tidal energy projects to get that going. In the meantime, we have a cash flow to get the fraudsters into court and whip all their property off them. And it, that'll go into the pool as well. So if you can understand what I just said,
that is my next plan now. I put it a bit on, on the uh, Maui Water Money Currency shares. Uh, that's where I'm going to start off on Facebook on that site under the Messenger uh, um, um, icon uh, onto our app. And I'll get that going uh, to contribute that way through Facebook uh, membership and also through their um, uh, other sites uh, that are connected to uh, Facebook. I've got a few more. Uh, you've got Amazon, um, e-commerce store, Facebook, um, and WhatsApp, Instagram, and Messenger. Okay, so that's just some of them that are there. Might be some other ones as well, but and press the shop. So between them, you're, you're talking about at least 3 billion membership that will go into the pound note currency. And we're hoping to get uh, pay, take pay to credit the money that we uh, receive in dividends and payouts to all the people who join us. Okay, so that's just a, a little footnote here before I forget to put it at the end, is that anyone who wishes to support my court case hearing between me, John Wanau, versus Natalie Flowerdew Brown, CIB detective, police in Auckland Central, when she gets back from, oh, I'm going to subpoena them all, I'm going to subpoena them all, and they have to appear in the High Court of Auckland. Um, uh, and I'm conducting the case myself in private as a private investigator prosecutor, okay? So I know what I'm doing. I can do it without any help of lawyers or barristers, and I have all the facts and evidence to support me, and including the videos and Facebook statements are acceptable as evidence, admissible in the High Court and in courts mostly around the world now, particularly Britain. They're acceptable in High Court of Admiralty in London. That's my last port of, port of call. If I needed to go there, it would have been better dealt with here, under the jurisdictions here, and under our jurisdiction of the UK uh, 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 law, uh, under this flag of King William on Waitangi Marae, King's Bench Court. Okay? So, um, um, uh, one short time again. So, if you, the average person, would contribute 50 pounds, um, uh, then we will match your 50 pounds and uh, we will convert the money over um, into um, your currency uh, as being accepted through transfer into pound notes uh, in our bank, um, our foreign currency account here in New Zealand to Britain. Um, ANZ here and ANZ in Britain, uh, London, is uh, set up to do that. Okay, so um, 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 if we can get that in, the sooner we get some funding up to conduct the case, the sooner I can get them into court strung up and we'll take Cook Street as being all the property assets stripped off them and locked them off. Everyone I take to court will be locked up in prison. That's the order of the day for committing fraud, outright fraud and thuggery, robbery, blackmail and everything that I'm saying against them. Okay, that includes you, Shannon Withers. You're liable now as third party touching these documents. You had a hand in it as a third party to the offensive landowners on Cook Street in the first place. Everything is hooked into that land fraud mortgage title. Okay, it stemmed, the police started this racket off after Judge Grant Fraser found me not guilty or innocent and the police bought it up. They bought these into another contract after that first contract was severed. Okay, so you've got yourselves wound up in trouble, self-inflicted trouble. Right, now we're going to go back on the unregisterable interests, unregister unregisterable and unregistered interests. Many interests in land are unregisterable and even if it is, like they're saying my case in this caveat is unregisterable, right? 
or unregistered. It's both. It's unregistered and unregisterable. They switched it off when they had no right to switch it off. They're supposed to register it. Right. In any case, land on trust is also unregisterable in terms of the beneficiary's interest. I'm the benefit here in my birth certificate. I'm the benefit here, be beneficiary here in that land. That's native that come from my native people, not from you Pakias imports, right? Not from you Pakias came under this land, right? That before 1835, there was Pakias already here. Those thugs came here and whipped past this, right? Land on trust is also an unregisterable, unregisterable in terms of beneficial interest. Trust deeds exist to supplement that but technically remain unregistered interest. Every trust is unregistered. So there's trusts inside that title to those landowners. They've got trusts in there, okay? And, and my trusts and my company has no interest registered in the Torrens land information titles here in their government New Zealand office, okay? Some leases aren't even cited in writing. Some leases are not even cited. When you cite something, it says where you got your information from. Okay? And caveats. Caveats, D-E-F, beware. A warning to someone searching the register, noting that another party has an interest in the land. It is a parliamentary creation. So... The interest in the land, the caveat, is created from Parliament, right? Whereby those with unregistered interest can protect themselves, Section 74H RPA, against claims being lodged. It freezes the register. That's what I was doing, freezing the register, preserving the status quo. S 74F idea that a caveat is claiming of interest in land. The lodging of a caveat is accepted on the grounds of protecting prior, prior, priority interests regardless of whether they are registrable or not. Right? I put that there as being that's my part of the interest and it goes on and on and on. So there I leave it and um, we will continue now with um, um, uh, filing the um, case into court, pay the fees, and wait for the court's decision. Okay. In the meantime, um, the case on Cook Street uh, still remains unresolved of how the Maori UN Federal Marshals got off their case with whose documents. The offence is Shannon Withers has disclosed my private confidential information with other interests without my authority. There. He's broken that rule between me and him and the court and the offence of people I'm now claiming him as one of them, who conspired to defraud me of my birth certificate identification theft and for creating documents for pecuniary gain of money, interests, from an account that belongs to me. I'm claiming that account. That's what I told him to do in my instructions. You'll see it on my emails to him many times to claim my trust that's been set up for me to sign. People that made you sign documents for your fines and everything from the court, they've stolen your money too. I'm just showing you graphically how they do it, illegally. I had to go to prison to show the fraud up. Otherwise, I would have no case to answer, not being a fraudster. 
for not being a criminal. They labeled me a criminal. I'm labeling them a criminal. All right? Turn the table around the other way and see the crook on the other end is the police themselves. The police are corrupted and unfortunately it has gone right through the world. And we're going to stop it right here. We're going to stop it right here. Because if this one fails on them in the court this time, and those landowners, the whole lot of you are gone. The House of Cards drops. That's what I've been saying all along. This is the House of Cards. That's ruined the whole world and the people in it. And screwed them and robbed them blind. Okay, so we're going to use the pound note as a levy debtor instrument against all these fraudsters I named from now on. If you've got somebody that has done the same to you, put their name somewhere so that when we come to it, we can deal with it very quickly. Once we do this blueprint, it's just a matter of registering your interests in whatever it is you're convicting them of. Okay, so I won't win a case against Maui or King William the Fourth jurisdiction. Okay, my word against yours. That's all it is. My word against yours, and my title against yours. Thank you very much, people. Um, get on with it now, and we'll catch you later. Oh, to um, Jamie, the earthquake um, at East Cape and off East Cape. That occurred about four o'clock this morning uh, is the first of earthquakes that um, um, man made. I'm, I'm, I'm saying these same parkiers that do these things have screwed all the money and they're using all their money to frighten people and to break our site where the Maui tidal turbine is going, is right where that earthquake happened. It's being pinpointed. They can pinpoint anywhere in the world with this um, weather modification and earthquake modifications of screwing the Earth's magnetic fields and with chemtrails and um, with um, food poisoning and, and um, um, all these strange things going on. Uh, it's been these people in America, the white-faced people, the Vatican Church and the Church of England and all the churches who are involved with state and church laws um, and the banks, Rothschild banks and those Arabs who have screwed the black Africans off their land and, and all those indigenous people in Australia and America, Canada and New Zealand here in the Pacific Islands they are the ones with the white faces who have wrecked the whole world and have caused that earthquake. The next one is going to be a 10.8 right on that spot. Okay, so I'm warning all you people that that strong key is going to get screwed over with their own equipment. It's going to turn on them. Somebody in there will push the wrong button and you're all gone because they're not happy. The people that work for you in your thuggery, and all this thuggery, they don't like what you're doing to them and their world. And they'll turn on you. They will turn on you and press the wrong button. Okay, and it'll backfire. That's what I see happening. But that, what I'm saying with a 10.8 earthquake at the East Cape, unfortunately, that's already in my brain. It's already there because those thugs, white people, in England and in and Europe uh, that are doing all these crazy things in America, Obama and, and Clinton, all those crazy politicians, uh, George Bush and all the rest of them, uh, Major and, and um, 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 David Cameron and all the rest of the thugs, uh, Philip Hammond, uh, uh, the foreign minister in there in Britain. All those people and their politics 
have caused all of these grief in all these countries that are now being beaten up, killed, and all sorts, and with Bill Gates and all the rest of the poisonous people, that uh, we will get to the bottom of that lot yet. But that earthquake is those people, the scientists and the uh, um, universities that are run by the Pope and his New World Order, this is this New World Order, is going off the rails, we're going to step in and sort that out too. Okay, these are the ordinary people, the common law people of the world, will team up with us in Maui and King William and take it all back. Okay, thank you, that's all. See you later. Bye.